Just <laughs> tactic is to get inside that, that beautiful long jab there of Teddy. Which is, is achievable, but the problem is then you have that uppercut to worry about. When we've seen that, how, how effective that can be in the past. He takes a little half a step back, Teddy, and then whips that uppercut right through the middle. Teddy had one win, which came in 11 seconds, the quickest ever in a world title fight. Well, it's not... Uh, I suspect that might never be broken. <laughs> Casimero, who'll be known to British fans as the man who stopped Charlie Edwards in September three years ago in an IBF flyweight title defence. He won this interim title in February against Ricardo Espinosa and then defended it in August against Cesar Ramirez. Both those came by way of stoppage. Oh, he's a quality operator, and if you allow him, if you allow him for, for with momentum... And he gets it on his side, then he's, then he's a really hard man to deter, he really is. So for Tete, it's just keeping him in his place all the time. Pivoting on that front foot, whipping that jab out. Not shortening the gap. Tete, tremendous athlete, stands five foot nine. And only weighed eight stone four at the weigh-in. Comfortably made the eight-six limit. That's that, and that's the crazy part of it. Oh, oh he makes the weight relatively comfortable it's never comfortable making any weight but he doesn't look as drawn as you see other fighters and that's uh, one of life's mysteries John he wants the brilliant Japanese fighter Noya Inui who beat Nanito Donaire in that terrific fight what was it three weeks ago oh, great great fight great fight wasn't it and uh, it should could have been Tete in the final had he been able to beat Donaire but he pulled out of that super series with a shoulder injury. It was the right arm, the right shoulder. And that sort of an injury, it's kind of psychological. Which he's got to trust himself to yeah, be able to have. throw it. Yeah, of course you have. Because, that, again, that right hand, which is the jab hand, of course, and Teddy is, is his most important weapon. On occasion... He kind of just does enough. We commentated oh, on a fight over in Yekaterinburg last year. It was that fight last October. Yeah. And that was that sort of fight, wasn't it? He won by about a four or five point margin, but he, he never really took any risks at all. No, I, I, you know, he, he can coast the fight, can he? So he can just he can stick in second gear, just pick you off and be happy with that. Well, fairly quiet opening round. Bell just coming up as uh, Casimero tries to launch that right hand and just whips it through. How did you score that one, Barry? I give it to Tete. I think just you know, some of those flicking jabs were enough to give him the edge for me. Casimero didn't really do uh, do enough, if anything, to be fair. Quiet sort of opener, wasn't it? will come when Casimero lands one of those big punches if or when he or, or when he fully commits to an attack he's jumped into a few attacks but I don't think he's been fully committed and if he when he does that if he can be effective or if Teddy can read it and as we said earlier whip that uppercut in, in the, in the, on the target Casimero promoted by the legendary Manny Pacquiao Sean Gibbons representing the little master over here. I think he's the chief executive officer or something of uh, Pacquiao Promotions. Or something. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a <laughs> significant job, you know. He introduced himself to me as that and also as the president, so I'm not sure I'm not sure which it was. Again, Casemiro got too much experience just to rush in because he knows he'll walk on the shots. But also, with him not doing that, means he's not being remotely effective. And even though Tete's not doing enough, he should be doing a lot more with that, with that right jab, to be fair. Tete just looks huge in comparison to Casemiro. That's an advantage he always has over pretty much every fight that he's faced. Talked about moving up in weights, that might happen at some point. And I guess another option, talked about Inui, but Rigondo. Yeah. The Cuban is fighting 
Liborio Solis for the regular WBA title. That's coming up in about three weeks. And he's, Tete's talked about fighting Rigondo, or as he's correctly pronounced with the uh, Spanish accent, Rigondo. And look, two absolute geniuses, but it could also be a stink out of a fight. Oh. They might just both be looking at each other. Could be a chess match, could each other to make the first move, yeah. Which this is a little bit at the moment. Yeah, it is. You know, and again, Casemiro's trying to trying to attack, but oh, short little right hand there. I thought it was half a head as well. As ever, Tete's entourage came to the ring singing and dancing as the second two rounds gone. How have you scored them both? Yeah, I give him both to Tete, but, you know, he's only barely doing enough, John, I just think... Well, it's what we said, isn't it? I mean, yeah, this is he what he did against uh, Mikhail Aloyan when he fought over in Yekaterinburg in Russia last uh, October. Well, he, well, obviously, oh, that's better there for Casemiro. Doubling up on the jab. Well, I guess he thinks, you know, it's, it's your move to close the gap, not mine. I'm the taller fight with the longer reach. I, I want to keep it long. you got to make. you got to try and bring it to me. Bags of experience, though, Casimero. Got a record of five wins and two defeats in world title fights. Tete, five and one. He's won his last 12 since September 2012. Casimero got him. He's got him with a butt now. He's getting hit. He's got him with a body shot, was it? No, it was on the chin. Sure. It was. It was a short right hook to the chin. And he's in trouble. He's all over the place. He's in real trouble. Tete's in a lot of trouble. And the referee wants to look at him. He's allowing it to continue. But can Casimero take him out here? It happened so quickly. And he's still got a long way to go in this round. There's one minute, 20 seconds. And... Tete still looks unsteady. He's got to buy some time here and make Casimero miss. Casimero needs to pick his punches and he can't find the clean shot and he falls down. Tete. I don't think there was a punch which put him down. He just collapsed to the canvas. He's not recovered from the first time. shot. He's not recovered from the first knockdown. I'm sure of it. Referee asking, is he okay? Casimero wants to finish it right here, right now, and finish it he has. The title changes hands in sensational fashion. Zolani Tete stopped by... But it's going to be celebrations in the Philippines and celebration for the Pacquiao camp. Absolutely delighted by what their man has produced. Thomas Triber's up there waiting for an opportunity to confirm the result. And you talk about Tete, and he does love the UK Tete. Casemiro got to love the UK. Because he comes over you and he gets and he gets come from beyond wins every time. Well, not come from beyond with, with Edwards, but everyone Ed, Ed thought Ed, it was Edwards crowning crowning glory and he and he does a job on him and he does a job on Tete. Well that's his you know, if you've never heard of Zelane Tete, you have to trust me and Barry. He is an out, has been an outstanding fighter, an outstanding champion. And to give him a beating like that, a shock defeat like that, you have to give all credit to Casimero. You really do. Are oh, you too? And you know, and, and you know, he must be a nice guy because Charlie Edwards is ringside. He's well, travelled up, he up to that see him, so there must be something there. And so you've got to give him, every, no, he ticks every box that, that you'd want from a champion. But what a win and what a statement he makes in a, in a fantastic division. There is Charlie Edwards at ringside, enjoying the moment. I wonder if he knows we're talking about him. And there's the moment which makes boxing special. Congratulations from Tete to the new champion. We didn't really see that one coming. And here now is Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. 
Two minutes, 14 seconds of round number three. Our referee in charge, Steve Gray, waves it off. Therefore, your winner by way of technical knockout and new WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, John Riel Cuadro Alas Casimeno. To say he is happy would be a significant understatement.